Hey everybody, it's Jimbo, and welcome back to another lesson of Introduction to Corn Shell. Now, we create our own variables in our programs, but Corn Shell also has some variables that it creates when you start Corn Shell. So, starting with this lesson, we're going to go over some of those variables that you would probably use on a frequent basis. Our program today is called resvars1.ksh for reserved variables 1.ksh. And this is the first lesson talking about corn shell reserved variables. Now, we create variables when we write corn shell scripts. However, corn shell itself also creates special variables for its own use. And these special variables are always all in caps. They may have numbers, but any letters are going to be in capital letters. So, for that reason, when you create your own variables, I suggest that you do not use all capital letters. There's two reasons. One, you may accidentally choose a name that is a corn shell reserved variable name and you'll end up overriding its contents and that variable may be may hold an important value also other people looking at your programs may see variables all in caps and may think that those variables are in fact corn shell reserved variables and that you were on purpose trying to overwrite corn shell reserved variables. Sometimes we do want to do that. So my suggestion to you is not to use all caps in your variable names. Now let's get out of this program and we will look at one variable, corn shell reserved variable, that's pretty easy to use. And the variable we're going to look at is the variable that holds the value for the prompt. That is PS1. So let's print out its contents. I'm going to go print, quote, let's put some colons around this variable. And once again, to get the value of a variable, you put a dollar sign in front. It's no different for variables that you create nor for variables the corn shell itself creates. You always put the dollar sign in front to get the value out. Unless, of course, you're inside of a math statement, in which case you don't have to use the sign. However, we're putting the dollar sign in front and we're surrounding the variable with colons so we can see exactly what the contents of the variable look like. We print it out. We see that it is dollar sign space. And it is, in fact, a dollar sign with a space, and then you can see our prompt is right here. So, excuse me, our cursor is right there. So let's change this to something else. To do that, it's the same way you set other variables. PS1 is equal to, and remember you can't put spaces before or after the equal sign, and let's just assign it a name of Jimbo. And I put a space afterward just because it makes things easier to read. And there you go. 